In this video we're going to take a look at Synced, which is a new machine from Tier 0 of the Hack the Box starting point track. It's been out for a week or two already, but I've been pretty busy so I'm just getting around to making the video now. But this should be a quick one so let's dive into it. As you can see I've already got the machine booted up which means I've connected to the starting point VPN. I added this IP address to the host file, just called it sync.hackthebox. And the first question it's asking us is what is the default port for rsync? So we know straight away what we need to go and look into, which is rsync, and there's a couple of things we probably want to start off by doing. The first thing is just see do we actually have this installed by default. And we do. You can see on the Linux system that I'm running, which is Parrot OS, this is installed, but it should be installed by default on most Linux systems. So let's open up the manual. So we have a very short description here. rsync is a fast, versatile, remote and local file copying tool. We've got some examples about how we can provide parameters and how we can use rsync in some different cases. And if we scroll down a little bit, we've got a more detailed description. So this says rsync is a fast and extraordinarily versatile file copying tool. It can copy locally to or from another host over any remote shell or to and from a remote rsync daemon. It offers a large number of options that can control every aspect of its behavior and permit very flexible specification of the set of files to be copied. It's famous for its delta transfer algorithm, which reduces the amount of data sent over the network by sending only the differences between the source files and the existing files in the destination. It's used widely for backups and mirroring and as an improved copy command for everyday use. rsync finds files that need to be transferred using a quick check algorithm by default that looks for files that have changed in size or in last modified time and any changes in the other preserved attributes are made to the final destination file directly when a quick check indicates that the file's data does not need to be updated. So essentially it's something like the file transfer protocol or FTP except it uses this delta transfer algorithm which means that it's only dealing with changes that are made to files so if you upload a file to FTP Let's say you upload a file to an FTP server, it's a document, and you want to make some changes to the document and then re-upload it. The whole document will be replaced, so you're uploading the whole document, whereas in this case, only the changes that have been made to the file will be uploaded or synced. And obviously that will reduce the bandwidth that's used. If you only need to update the changes, you don't have to keep transferring the whole file, and it will be good for backups and mirroring. And if we scroll down, we have some more additional features. We've got some general information, and then we'll have a lot of usage information describing how we can use rsync, the various options that we can provide. Obviously, there's a lot here, so typically, whenever we're actually trying to use a program, we probably want to find things fast. We might want to just use rsync h to bring up the help menu, and that's got us straight into these options that we might want to look through. And we should have some at least a little bit of information describing the program as well. Another tool that I like to use is TLDR. So we can say TLDR rsync, and this will just give us some different example commands. So you have a short description, transfer file, transfer directory contents, but not the directory itself from a remote to local server. And then we have an example of the command. So if you're just looking for a command very quickly and don't want to sit and read through the manual or the help menu, then TLDR DR is a good option. Okay, so now that we know a little bit about what rsync is and how we can use it, let's go back to the questions. It asked us what was the default port for rsync. I didn't actually see that mentioned there. It was probably in there somewhere. But this is a good excuse to go and open up Hacktricks. Let's search rsync and see what they've got. And if we do that, we can immediately see 873 is going to be the default port. So let me go and enter that as our first answer. It also asks us how many TCP ports are open on the remote host. So I ran through this box yesterday and whenever I was doing that I ran an nmap scan so all ports we can do with dash p dash. However it only came back with the one port so let's just scan that port just to save a little bit of time in the video. It was 873 right? Yep. 873. We can enumerate the services. We can run default scripts if there are any for this port and let's enter in sync.hackthebox or you can provide the IP address that's given here. So it comes back very quickly with the service rsync and we can see it's protocol version 31 which is actually question 3 so let's go and say there was one TCP port open 
it was, what was it, 31? And what is the most common command name on Linux to interact with rsync? This actually confused me for a second because I, I, I was expecting it to be something other than what it is. Let's just jump over to hat tricks here anyway. So we have some example commands as ever in here. We can do some banner enumeration. We can look for some default scripts. So there is actually an nmap script rsync list modules which we could use. In fact, let's grab that. Let's paste that in here. It was 873 and sync.hack the So presumably this isn't a default script if it didn't give us the modules on the first query. Okay, it doesn't give us anything extra. Maybe that was a default script. Maybe it was just coming back with the protocol version. Okay, so it asked us what was the common command name. I assumed that it was going to be some other command other than rsync, but we can see here that this ends with a C and it's uh, the characters match up. So it's just looking for rsync. Maybe it could be worded a little bit differently. It's essentially asking us how do we run rsync on Linux, which is obviously to type in rsync. Next we're asked what credentials do you have to pass to rsync in order to use anonymous authentication? And we've got some examples here. We could go over to Hattricks and just maybe search here for anonymous. Nothing's coming up. We could also just do that with the help menu as well. So um, rsync-h and then we could try and grep case insensitive anonymous. Nothing comes up. So let's go and see what were the options. Anonymous anonymous, which is what we would use with FTP for anonymous login. Anonymous non or rsync rsync. Well, looking at the answer field, we can see it is four characters and ends with an E. So looks like we don't need to provide any credentials in order to connect anonymously. And what is the option to only list shares and files? Again, let me just go back and do the same thing. So we're going to bring up the help menu. We're going to grep out list. And you can see here we've got this list only, which says list the files instead of copying them. So take a copy of that and we'll submit that. And yeah, very quick box. We're down to our root flag already. So we need to go and try and connect to the rsync server and see where this flag is. So let's start by using this list only option to see if we can actually list the files on the server. So let me bring up TLDR again. We'll do TLDR rsync and see do any of these options have the list mode, they don't. And you see here transfer a file from local to remote, well we're going to be wanting to get the flag so it's going to be from the remote server to our local system. So we're going to want something like this, rsync, the host that we want to grab the file from, colon, the path, the path to the remote file and then where we want to retrieve that to on our local system. I'm going to try and do this list option first so oh, I can't copy and paste from there, okay. Let's do rsync and then let's do list only and let's see if we can just provide the host name rather than the IP address it looks like we can't, I get some error there okay let us let's go to Hacktricks and see do they have some examples you can see they have one here with list only using the dash a v flag we could go and have a look and see what that flag is, I'm not too sure, let's just try it with this rsync protocol. So we'll try that again, we'll do rsync and see does that work. And it does, okay, it comes back with the public anonymous share, presumably this is the description and this is the name of it, so let's try and do that again, let's do public at the end and there we have the flag. Okay, so we want to retrieve it now. Let's just add flag.txt and we want to put it in a local directory. I'll just put it in the current directory we're working in, which is the desktop. Remove this list only option and let's try and print the flag. There we go. All right, so we've retrieved a file from the rsync server and we'll submit that flag and there we go. So for anybody who's been wondering why my videos have slowed down, I used to be released in a couple of weeks and then it was down to like one a week and now it's one a month. I will try and get back into it soon. I want to make a video on Obsidian and using it for note taking in pen testing and on Hack the Box and stuff like that because I've been using Cherry Tree for about three or four years since I did my OSCP certification and I wanted to move over to something which used Markdown. 
I have done that and after a couple of weeks of using it I've picked up a couple of tricks and maybe just want to show my methodology for note taking when it comes to solving boxes like this. So I'll probably make a video solving a hack the box machine, a retired hack the box machine which I haven't actually done before. I've only done the starting point machines and hack the box challenges because I leave the write ups to the box write ups of videos to IPSEC. I don't really feel like I can add much to them but in this case I'll go through installing Obsidian, making some configuration changes, themes and things like that and then I'll run through the box and take notes as I go and show some of the different features in Obsidian and just the, the general process. I'm also hoping to complete the CPTS, Certified Penetration Test Specialist certification by Hack the Box soon. So providing that I pass the exam, I'll make a video reviewing it and kind of going through things that I've learned. I'll probably post on Twitter and LinkedIn and stuff asking for community questions. So if anybody has any questions at the time, they can provide those and then I'll add those to the video. Um, yeah, so apart from that, I've been pretty busy. I have my PhD Viva next month. So once that's over, hopefully I'll be able to start creating some more content. But anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have any questions or comments, as ever, leave them down below. Thanks.